Hey, this is Mr. Perez. Today, we're gonna do a quick review of some exponents. Of course, we gotta get started with Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, we're doing exponents today. Woohoo! Oh, you think this is fun, uh huh? Well, you better think it's fun. <laughs> All right, Charlie, you're right there. Exponents. Okay, now recall, from pre-algebra, we defined multiplication as sums, right? And so here, we're gonna take three times four which means we have four of these threes all being added together. That's three times four. And if we do three plus three plus three plus three, that gives us 12. Okay, that's the way we defined multiplication back in pre-algebra. Now, why do we do that? For this reason. We have three raised to the fourth power, right? Now, three raised to the fourth power means you still have four threes, but they're not being added together. They're being what, Charlie? Multiplied. Multiplied together, right? Okay, and then we can bust out some Kung Fu. Remember, when everything is being multiplied, we can multiply in any order. So we're kind of grouping things here. Three times three is nine, right? And three times three is nine. And nine times nine is what, Charlie? 81. 81. Very nice there, Charlie. Now, we say this as three raised to the fourth power, where the three is defined as the base and the four is defined to be the exponent. Okay? All right, now. Let's do some problems. Evaluate. That means find the value of. Okay, so find the value of 2 raised to the third power. That has a shortcut name. We say 2 cubed. Okay, 2 to the third means you have 2 times 2 times 2. Notice there's three 2's all being multiplied. And 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. Very nice there. Okay, now let's do another one. Now be careful with this one. Notice we have a negative 2 in parentheses. Now, if your negative number is a base, we're going to put it in parentheses, right? And so negative 2 to the fourth power means that we're going to have four of these negative 2s all being multiplied together. Well, now we're going to use some Kung Fu here and say, well, negative times a negative is a positive. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. And what's a positive 4 times a positive 4, Charlie? 16. 16. So that answer is a positive 16. Okay, now let's go to this next problem. Now, I'm writing this as negative 1 times 2 to the 4th because a lot of people mess up this problem only because you don't really interpret the language correctly, okay? And so we don't generally write negative 1 times 2 to the 4th. We write it this way, negative 1 times 2 to the 4th. This is how it's written. Notice there's no parentheses around that 2. That bottom part right there. A negative sign in front of 2 to the 4th means negative 1 times 2 to the 4th, okay? So we like to be uh, precise when we write in the language of math. And a lot of you know how to do the, the problems, it's just that sometimes you're interpreting it incorrectly. And so we like to be precise. It's like, you know, when you're going, driving to your school and you see this big old sign out there and it says, you know, swim meet today at the pool. Where else is it going to be? Of course it's going to be at the pool. So it's kind of the same thing here when we say negative 1 times 2 to the 4th is written the negative sign in front of 2 to the 4th. So that's what it means. And once you understand that, then it becomes easy because you see it as negative 1 times 2 to the 4th. Notice it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is the same as 4 times 4 is 16. But there's a negative 1 in front, so it really means negative 1 times 16. So here, the answer is negative 16. So just be careful with that. Okay, let's move on now. Let's do some fractions, evaluate. 3 halves raised to the third power, or 3 halves cubed. Well, 3 halves cubed means 3 halves times 3 halves times 3 halves. There's three of them being multiplied together. And when you multiply straight across the top, you get 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is... 27, Charlie. Now, what's 2 times 2 times 2? 8. 8. That's right. It's 27 8. So we'll leave it as an improper fraction here. Now, here it is again. This is read as negative 1 times 1 half squared. Negative 1 half is not in parentheses, right? The 1 half is in parentheses, but it's not a negative 1 half in parentheses. What I'm trying to say is the negative sign is outside of the parentheses. The base is 1 half the exponent is 2, and you have a negative 1 being multiplied to that quantity here. Now, order of operations says you must do the exponent before you do the multiplication. 
So that's why you have to put that negative one out front. You gotta do it in your mind and realize it's one half times one half, which is one fourth, but it's being multiplied to the negative one. And right here you see our answer is negative one fourth, right? So be careful with those. All right, so let's do a couple decimals here. Now, a lot of you read that as 0.3. Well, how is that one properly read? 0.3 is really 3 tenths, right? And so right here we have 3 tenths squared, which means 3 tenths times 3 tenths, or 0.3 times 0.3. And if you had a calculator, you would see that 3 tenths times 3 tenths is 9 one hundredths. If you know how to read decimals, that's what you should have learned in pre-algebra. And so most of you say, oh, 0.3 times 0.3 is 0.09, because you're sitting there with those calculator kids and putting the numbers in your calculator, right? Well, the calculator is a learning tool, so don't get too dependent on the calculators, right? All right, so anyway, so our answer is 0 0.09, which is 9 one hundredths. Well, if you understand what decimals are, for instance, 0 0.3 is 3 tenths, it might be a little easier to take this approach. See, 0.3, which is 3 tenths, we have 3 tenths squared, which means 3 tenths times 3 tenths, and when you multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom, you get 9 one hundredths. How do you write 9 one hundredths as a decimal? 9 one hundredths, or 0 0.09, which is 9 one hundredths. It's the same thing. So, anyway, that's enough for now. Let's take a break and we'll see you all again soon.